Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. Thank you, Willem, for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Nice to be with you. Very sort good. of virtually be with you. <laughs> <laughs> the pleasure is mine. I was so captivated by just the physical changes that you went through during the course of Nemo's stay in this penthouse. So with, with a role that has such rigors, do you have to develop a more method approach to preparation and immerse in yourself in isolation? Or is this part of your normal process to really craft who Nemo is? Um, I would show up every day <laughs> and I would do the work. I, 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 I'm always kind of unclear what a method approach is. I have some idea, but I'm not trained that way. Um, so I don't uh, think of that. It, it was a very good situation where I show up every day, same place. It's just me and the crew and we're figuring stuff out. So you get to work. So the beauty of it is it was all doing. There wasn't a lot of thinking or talking. We did, 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 because in the story, there's such a, a strong narrative. You know, there's lots of things to do. I've got to build that tower. I've got to find food. I've got to, very clear things. So we would devote ourselves to that. And then we were shot, shooting in chronological order, which was beautiful because we, Never discussed really how long he was in there, but we knew from day one I was going to stop shaving. I was going to let my hair grow, let my nails grow, get a little funky, maybe lose a little weight, you know. So that, that all creates a condition that allows you to pretend and invest in the situation. Mm -hmm. Watching you perform made me do my own self-stock of reassessing the value that I place on objects and what I really need when I and what I really don't need. Like I love my cell phone, but if I'm in a survival situation, it may not help me. Do you did you have your own inner thoughts, examinations of the value that you place on the things around you in your real life? Yes, I, I, you expressed it very well. I think all over this movie. It keeps on returning to that thing that objects that we put a certain kind of value or a certain kind of nature on. We say, you know, cell phone good or cell phone bad. It it depends on the on the situation. It's interesting to see that art that's priceless and really something that you want in one moment, in another moment, in the same place, nothing's changed except for the situation, it becomes useless because what you really need. Isn't that, you need food. So it's interesting to see what we put on, we delude ourselves th into thinking that certain things have an inherent value and that's an objective thing. It's not, it's subjective. So I constantly felt that, that you're in a situation, you're in a luxurious place, but it's become hell. Anybody, it's a cold place, but you know, it's a, it's a place of luxury, but it becomes this horrible place. The same place, the situation is different. And I think there's a big lesson there somewhere. somewhere. Mm -hmm. Well, I thank you there for wrapping me. Your performance was masterful. I really, really enjoyed this right. movie. Thanks a lot. And I referred some people to it. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks so much. There we are. So let us begin. Thank you so much for your time, gentlemen. I really enjoyed this movie. It was very provocative. It was very thought provoking. And I thought about the value that I place on, object, on objects, depending on what my needs are at the current time. And beginning with you, Vasilis, I read the production notes about how it started as a musing on the importance of art, but how did it expand into a a captive story and almost someone being encompassed in a in a tomb in a prison how did it expand into that but i i i would say that it started from that and expanded to the uh, to the art uh, perspective of the of the story um i mean basically i wanted to make a film uh, about uh, a guy trapped in a uh, in a place like a Robinson Crusoe uh, story, but instead of having, um, you know, in the, stuck in a lonely island, 
surrounded by nature. I wanted to put him in in, in uh, the middle of a huge metropolis like New York, with uh, all this with uh, uh, all this life coming passing by uh, from his huge windows. But everything is so close, but everything is so far away as well. So that was uh, my my initial thought, and then. Um, to to include in this environment, uh, I wanted to show the um, the um, uh, character of the guy that owns this place. So a, a, a way of showing this character and make a, make the it was through his art collection. So the art collection so the, uh, mirrors uh, the owner's character, the owner's personality, uh, and. Um, it, it and also it works like um, like the eyes of the owner, the uh, like uh, uh, like a, a surveillance system, let's say, of the of the owner to to move to my hero. Which is a a great transition into the art itself. And I was thinking about you know as that art was holding <clears> up a mirror to the owner of the penthouse, but also in the value within that, Leonardo, for you. Um, one of the primary pieces that Nimmo is looking for is a self-portrait. And as, of course, as he identifies all this art in there, he gets different insights into who the owner is. Why is a self-portrait the most valuable? And what can you tell us about the other pieces that he comes in contact during the film? So um, I think in Vasily's vision, even before I arrived, uh, there was a, a probably, you know, the, the idea that one work was the real, uh, you know, what what the thief was really after. And so we've had several conversation on what this work should be, because of, you know, a, an immediacy also in the perception of the audience to understand the value of the work. That's why we chose uh, a, a modern master compared to all the other works that are more like contemporary artworks. Um, because you know, it's obviously a work that speaks to a wider audience. The idea of a self-portrait and the idea of Chile was on the one hand, because every work, as, as Vasilis was saying, mirrors in different way, the psychological breakdown of the character, but also his physical, somehow, some, some, some of the physical characteristics. And Egon Schiele, these tormented bodies that he was uh, depicting, remind us in certain moments later in the film of, of the physicality of Nemo. Uh, the idea of a self-portrait, I think the self-portrait is one of the most intimate forms of, of, uh, of art for an artist, no? is the way they see themselves. And so the idea of you know, Nemo looking at himself in the works was this idea also of somehow visualizing this as a self-portrait absolutely it's You're... very it's very important to say sorry about that but i just oh, thought please. that you know it's the self-admiration of human beings it's such an important thing i mean you know when we made mobiles the first thing that we do we started making selfies you know and people get got crazy with that so you can think that self-portraits are the, the first, first selfies <laughs> of humanity in a way it's, so it's it's very interesting if you think about it, about that. And you know, for many artists, self portraits were works that sometimes were not even sold, were not exhibited. I mean, Dürer ended up making self portrait all his life. Like there, it's really there's a long tradition of ways in which artists look at look at themselves because it's part of human nature. Mm -hmm. You know, that's fascinating when you think about the 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 idea of selfies and self-portraits and what they represent in different ways. Um, Leonardo, back to you before we I go back to you, Yorgos, to follow up with you. A lot of selfie creation or photo snapping has now come to a place where it's enhanced and there's filters and these things to alter us. Is there a same sort of machination within art or artists who draw self-portraits that uh, same type of I don't know, like a vehicle where it alters or it's just, is that based on style or how someone creates a self-portrait of themselves versus say a selfie that's so filtered and enhanced and is really not even self anymore by the time we see it. <laughs> it's, 
does that does that make sense yeah yeah, yeah. it's a way it's that very, makes sense a lot more in portraits for example if you think about the gioconda the reason why that that work is so iconic is because leonardo had it with him for over 20 years and kept repainting it so at some point it's not anymore about the portrait of the woman that he was depicting but it becomes essentially a vision of how we see someone else you know like how uh like the quintessential idea of a portrait that's why I think I, it goes beyond the subject that he was portraying. So in this sense, the, what Vasilis was saying before, that in the art collection, there are a lot of human figures, was this idea that Nemo, the character of the film, kept feeling observed by these, by these paintings. And, 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 and in most of the time, these paintings or photographs are works of where the human figure is isolated. Uh, so in that sense, this also mirror the, the condition of the character. Yorgos, over to you. I, by helping to bring a project like this to life, it, it, it's, it's very, it's very thought provoking and masterful. And it stands out at a time where so many things that are brought to film are not original anymore. They're not particularly creative. It's well, forgive me, but there are a lot of remakes, reboots, all of these things, but to, to champion a project like this that's centered on one, essentially one person, one character to, to carry the story throughout. What was the most enticing about bringing this to life along with the Zillas for you? Well, you, you hit us directly into the bone, you know. Uh, you know, when Vasilis came with the idea, my first uh, reaction was, I really don't know how we can do this thing and uh, how we can develop it, you know, because it's it's an idea that can go so many different directions. Um, it's, um, and, you know, the more you dig it, it, it gets more interesting and you can add layers. So... You know, it's for us. What I, I I deeply believe is that the the ambition and the simplicity of the idea made everybody uh, stuck with the project. You know, uh, friends um, that came on board to help us develop the writer Willem, of course, all the co-producers that came at the end together and the financiers. So you know, this idea has something that it is. You know, it's one of the things that you say. But it sounds so. So I'm I'm, I'm, sure, I'm I'm sure somebody has made this film. I mean, nobody has done this idea. You know, it's this kind of. And then for me, this is the biggest value in an idea when everybody can connect very quickly, and they can really, you know, understand that. Okay, I mean, if it's done the right way, it can be something very simple and very original. And if uh, there is something that we take pride uh, that we take pride in our film, that you know somebody can like it, somebody cannot like it, but everybody who sees it, I think, will say, okay, this is this is new, this is this is an original, uh, you know, idea and an, an original take on on a confinement uh, story uh, that brings it to another level. So. What? One of my, I was going to say, one of my favorite moments or moments that occurred throughout the film is as uh, Willem's character Nemo continues to build this structure sort of in the middle of the room in an attempt, you know, one of his many at attempts to, to escape the space. But ultimately, as we see it pan out, as it becomes bigger and bigger, it looks like art within itself in the center of the room. And there's a place here in Los Angeles where I live called the Watts Tower was created by this artist, Simon. And it reminded me of how he used all these materials to, to, to build all these structures. Uh, Vasilis, for you, with, the, with Nemo's construction of that tower, is there a additional symbolic meaning in it for you? It's a means for him to try to escape, but just using all these materials to erect this structure within this master, this masterful house. For, uh, yes, for me, I wanted uh, uh, my hero to have a, an uh, ascension. So somehow like, uh, like a biblical, in a biblical uh, 
uh, way and also to building this tower is like building the tower of bubble and you know there are many many symbolism but um uh, mainly i think that what left in the in the house it's an art installation by itself it's so weird it looks like an art installation as as you said that uh that it's like my my character be becoming a work of art at the end uh, of the of the day so he because we should not forget that the the primitive um uh, the, um, the primitive uh, utility of art was to communicate, mm -hmm. I mean, and uh, this is the this is what I mean. What we know about from the ancient civilizations is uh, from the remains of their art that we find. So you, I mean, taking let's say from the caves, the the paintings in the cave, and later from sculptures and uh, uh, other. So we 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 learn about that. So it was a way of these people communicating to the next generations through the through the art. So we tend to forget that this that was the the utility, you know, a big utility. So in the same way, he leaves his uh, his communicate. Uh, my, my hero leaves this amazing and the murals as well in order to communicate it with the people that will come after him. Will come after to this apartment. And, you know, and uh, find this uh, remains. It's his monument, let's it's say. His monument. Yeah. But also, you know, I, I just realized because everybody's uh, commenting this, uh, uh, the last image of the film. Everybody yeah. says it strikes them so hard. And I think that, you know, this image is so strong. And actually, it's, it's, it's a shot that we have, we were trying and we were debating, you know, we were shooting it and shooting it and thinking what is the right you know angle and how we can place it at the end of the film if you think about it you know materials and uh, ownership is a kind of uh, enslavement for humanity you know and actually yeah. you this image says that all these belongings is the something that helps him to set free himself so and you go into the deep meaning of what the object is and how it should serve the human being, the human soul, you know. So it's so there is something, as Vasily said, something really religious in this image. It's something really, I don't know. It's spiritual. Yeah. It's very spiritual. Yeah. It went from the Tower of Babel to the Tower of Pisa. Until <laughs> 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 It, it was fascinating to me, even in the construction of that piece itself, for a home that was so minimal and so high tech, had all of these things hiding in the drawers, in the walls, in different places that it didn't expect, because it gave the illusion of being so clean. And as Nimmo makes his way through the environment to try to find these things, it's really quite messy as humanity normally is. Leonardo, back over to you. When did you help uh, consult with how the piece, the installation, the 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 materials that are erected in the center of the house? Did you confer with him on that, on no. them at all? No, this was Vasily's vision that was there already when I arrived, but it inspired the selection, for example, of one of the artworks, which is this series of photographs by Jana Piotrowska. Uh, Joanna Petroska is a Polish phot photographer and she made this series where she asked uh, friends and, and people she knows, she knew, um, to build their own shelters inside their own houses with the, you know, with objects that they would find. And I think this series is really beautiful because it shows uh, a certain, you know, attitude that we have towards this idea of building inside your own environment uh, and on you know, your own domestic environment something that can protect you but this is very precarious and very fragile um, and i think this sense of fragility and precarity and this sense of you know the house being a place that's that protects you but also a place that can trap you in many in many many ways is something that we all know now and we relate to very, very clearly after what we have experienced with the pandemic. So <clears throat> in this sense, that tower has been the inspiration of many of the choices of the works that we did together. 
uh, and uh, I completely agree. Uh, the, the the vision that it has, it's it's very charged with a lot of uh, possible meanings from re like uh, religious references, this idea of ascension, but also which is which is mirrored, for example, also by the book of William Blake that he finds uh, during the the film, but also to the idea of yes, like consumerism and the accumulation of objects that in the end, when it comes to survival, they're just you know. Uh, objects that can be accumulated to reach to reach the, the the exit. I want to add here that this tower it was designed by our production designer Thorsten Sabel, that uh, he you know he did an amazing work building all this uh, house and make this uh, make it minimal, making brutalist, making uh, um, and giving an, an amazing atmosphere. And I was so, I always worried how this is going to look, how this is going to, because I really want it to look amazing. And he and he pulled it off and by only by using, the, the, the truth is that everything you see in the tower, they are in the, on the set. We, we didn't use additional yeah. furniture or additional uh, stuff. So it's it would be, a tower. I mean, if someone wanted to make the, the tower from the furniture of of their apartment, that would be that. Uh, uh, it's this is uh, legit. This is, yeah. It's legit. So that I've, was amazing because he even had to take into account the static. You know, we Willem really used it to to you know he, everything was done practically. That was the very for for me uh, looking on the production uh, side Design. of things i mean in the making of you will see a shot when uh, we have the first ad with a small hair dryer making the um, uh, the, the most simple uh, special effect you know making the air from the air condition to to william's hair when when for the first time he and for me it's, it was so amazing to be in, in such a huge set which was so high tech also the set and the whole virtual production in, uh, in front of the of the apartment and that and working with the simplest tools of cinema which is yeah. to tell the story just be behind the camera and sit it in the best yeah. way possible by That's using the, yes, the, the hair dryer yeah. by the makeup artist yeah. that, you know because <laughs> for me this is uh this is the beauty of cinema you know it's uh it was gorgeous. I was I was riveted. I sat there in my screening with there were about five of us, I think, that sat in there. And I've never sat through a film where everyone was completely silent the entire time because I felt like I had I would miss something essential. And the more I watched like this and I just kind of looked around at all the things that were happening in the house. I'm like, oh no, not the dwell chairs. It looked like something. <laughs> I'll peel the chairs. They're very expensive. But yes, I thank you so much, gentlemen, for your time. This is a gorgeous film. It is wonderful. And I've been trying to tell lots of people to see it when it becomes available because it's so thought provoking and it really kind of made me take some self stock about the things in my house of survival. How important are those really to my life? Uh, when my basic needs aren't being met, but you know the occupation that we have as humans with people seeing things that we have even when we don't need them was a uh, very very wonderful to me. Thank you, gentlemen. Again, I appreciate. Thank you so time. much, Deandra. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Take Thank care. You. Shake your booties for black girl nerds.